If you want to use one of these to record into this, in this video I'll show you how. If you've never used an audio interface to record your voice, your guitar or whatever into GarageBand before, it can be difficult to know where to start. In this video I'll share some different interface options, show how to hook them up to your Mac and what you need to do on the software side to get up and running. If you already own an audio interface and just want to learn how it works in GarageBand, you don't need to watch this next bit. You can use the timestamps below to skip to the next section if you want. No matter your budget, you will be able to grab an audio interface that will let you get recording in GarageBand. For example, this M Audio M Track Solo goes for around $50 or £40, has a combo input for an XLR microphone or lined instrument, and a dedicated instrument input. It provides phantom power for a condenser microphone and is probably the best budget audio interface on the market right now. Alternatively, this Audient Evo 4 costs around £90 or $120, has two XLR slash jack combo inputs, a dedicated instrument input and features smart gain. This feature sets the level of your mic or guitar automatically, so you won't risk clipping the signal. Next is this Arturia Mini Fuse 2. This costs around $140 or £110, has two XLR slash jack combo inputs, includes LED level meters so you can monitor your signal, MIDI in and out ports on the back and also a USB port on the back, allowing you to attach things like USB MIDI controllers directly to the interface. Finally, this is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. This interface costs $200 or £190, comes with two dedicated XLR inputs and two jack inputs, has Focusrite's iconic gain halos which allow you to accurately set your input and output levels includes auto gain and clip safe features and is built like an absolute tank. All of these interfaces have their own unique selling points and there are many, many more options out there, but whatever model you choose, they'll all get the job done. Depending on what model of Mac you have, hooking up your USB audio interface will either be really straightforward or maybe a bit more of a pain in the backside. Using the Scarlett 2i2 as an example, it comes with a USB-C to USB-A cable. The USB-C goes into the back of the interface and the USB-A plug goes into your Mac. If you've got a Mac Mini, older model iMac or MacBook Air or newer MacBook Pro, then you can go ahead and plug the USB-A plug right into one of your machine's USB-A ports. If however you have a newer iMac, MacBook Air or older MacBook Pro model, basically any Mac that only has USB-C ports, you're going to need either a USB-C to USB-C cable or an adapter. Luckily you can pick up a USB-C to USB-C cable for a couple of quid off of Amazon or an adapter like this one for around $20 or £15. Using the cable is pretty self-explanatory. To use the adapter, all you need to do is plug the USB-C plug into your Mac's USB-C port, then plug your audio interface's USB-A plug into the adapter. However you connect them, interfaces like this are bus powered, meaning you don't need to power them externally. They get all the juice they need from their USB connection. Once your audio interface is connected, dive into your Mac system settings. In the sound tab, you'll be able to select your audio interface as the input and or output. For example, you can see the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 here listed in both output and input sections. Now, you'll still need to set up your audio interface inside GarageBand itself. When you open a new GarageBand project, you have the option to select your input and output options from the Details drop down menu in the new project window. For example, I can select the Focusrite Scarlett as my input here and choose it as my output here. You can do this inside GarageBand as well. With your GarageBand project open, click on GarageBand in the toolbar 
then select settings. In the audio slash MIDI tab, you have the same input and output options found in the new project window. Selecting the Scarlet as my input here allows me to record to an audio track using one of its available inputs. Selecting it as an output means all sound produced by GarageBand will go to the Scarlet 2i2 and out via either an attached pair of headphones or studio speakers. If I want to have sounds from GarageBand come out of my Mac's built-in speakers, I'd select System Setting in the Output menu here. The Scarlet should now be automatically available to use with any new audio track created in GarageBand. But if your interface doesn't appear automatically, or you just want to set this stuff up manually, here's how to do that. Down here in the Smart Control section, you can toggle this open or close by clicking the dial icon in the top of the screen. Click here where it says Input. In this case, these correspond to the inputs present on the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 I have connected. If, for example, I have a microphone attached to this interface through the first XLR connection, I click on Input, select Input 1, and then when I hit Record on this audio track, the track will record audio from that input. If you're wearing headphones while recording, and you probably should be, click the monitor button here so that you can hear yourself. Alright, you've set up your audio interface, what do you need to do next? 